Hi, I'm Chris Sabara, and I'm a senior technical consultant for HRP Associates, and I'll be showing you an intro to Rockworks for 3D data visualization software. So we're going to be looking at a tutorial for Rockworks today. Um, I'm going to be using some of their tutorial data. This way it's already in the correct format, but I'll be going over what the format for the spreadsheet that holds the data is going to look like, um, and then some basic to slightly more advanced outputs for how to visualize the data in 2D and 3D. So the first step of this process is going to be opening a blank brand new project. So we're gonna be going up to the project folder icon, new. And for this set, we want to create an empty project um, using the default settings. I'm going to rename the project to today's date. And the next step is selecting your coordinate system, the location of your project, and the details about which units you're going to use. So in the case of my data set, we're going to be using, um, this is currently in state plane, but we're going to set ours to UTM, uh, Universal Transverse Mercator. Um, and for this particular data set, we want to use uh, the UTM 13 zone. Once that's selected, we're gonna make sure that we're on meters for both um, our X and Y coordinates and also set our depth to meters so that we're all in the same units. The window pops up just to confirm our choices and that everything is going to work for this particular data set. So we just hit yes in the bottom corner. And so this is our new blank project. In the top left corner, you can see that we've updated our coordinate system to UTM. This is our active zone within UTM that we're gonna be using and our units are in meters. The next step is going to be opening up our Excel sheet and looking at uh, the state of our data, how it's organized, and if there's any adjustments we need to make before we load it into the system. So I have our Excel sheet already opened up. The structure of the Excel sheet is a, it's, the minimum is a four tab uh, spreadsheet. You need location, interval, either stratigraphy or lithology, and a corresponding type for either stratigraphy or lithology. In this case, we'll be using lithology because this is the unconsolidated overburden materials for this particular data set. The columns that you need are a borehole ID column so column A for this first location tab, followed by the locations of each of these borings, the elevation at the top of the boring, and the total depth that the boring goes to. For your interval tab, this is where you're going to be referencing those boring IDs that we had in the previous tab. Um, and then you, on top of that, you'll also have the different materials that are present within your borings and at the corresponding depth intervals. These values can also be used to import things like, in this case, benzene soil concentrations. Um, and this is where you can eventually build into 3D models that show areas of contamination. But in this case, we'll be using this to set up our cross section. Under lithology, this is where, again, those same boring IDs are listed, as well as your depth intervals, and then the different materials that were present at those corresponding depth intervals. And then the final area is our lithology type. This is where we've defined all of our different uh, soil and sediment units, as well as the pattern that will show up in Rockworks when we load the data in, and some other information that we're using for calculations for volume and also for cut and fill, potentially. So now back in our data import, the next step we're going to do is import the data into our system. So under the borehole manager in the center of the screen, we're gonna click on file, go down to import, choose the Excel option. And for us, we're gonna be using a row-based multi-table uh, Excel document. You can also load Excel on individual sheets, but using a row-based multiple sheet spreadsheet just saves you some time. Uh, it also will ask you the question, would you like to back up your system before you load the data in? In our case, it's a blank file, so we have no concerns. But if you have an existing uh, project that you want to load additional data into, this is definitely a step you want to take. It'll make it very easy to go backwards in case you make a mistake. So now this is our file import tool. So we're gonna click on the open folder icon. And in my case, 
my Rockworks data is saved in my samples folder, sample training 01. This shows you which of the fields are going to be active based on the location, interval, stratigraphy, lithology, all the different information that we've already looked at. Um, our data coordinates are automatically in the correct um, configuration for this particular data set, but if they weren't, this is where you can work on some sort of conversion factor from latitude and longitude to UTM or state plane or any of the other coordinate systems that you might be working in. And location fields, this is an area where you can add, change, or modify any of the inputs that you're putting into your model. Um, in our case, everything lines up well. In the event that you wanted to add an additional database field, you can click on the option within this uh, user interface and click on add new field. And this is where you can add, so for instance, in this particular data set, API stands for uh, American Petroleum Institute. So if you wanted to, you could add in the American Petroleum Institute. And for the field type, we're gonna use string. All right, now we're gonna hit import. So we got a message that says, just once again, to confirm our coordinate reference system, that all looks correct. Now it's giving us the option to update the project dimensions. So right now, our project's in the correct coordinate system and in the correct location, but our box that all of our data is going to fit into uh, is not defined. So this next step is going to show us the current default settings where our X, Y, and Z coordinates go from zero to 100 with even spacing of 10 um, per space. But instead what we can do is open up the scan tool to our borehole dimensions, selecting all boreholes. And what this will do is look at our data, look at the locations of the top of the soil borings and allow us to set our domain for our model within the parameters that our data set is already predefined in. So we're gonna hit continue. And you can see up top here, it's changed from zero to 100 to now the minimum and maximum for our X, Y, and Z coordinates. So now we can close that user interface. And so now our data has been successfully loaded into Rockworks. Uh, if you want to, as an example, look at any of these boreholes, just to confirm, if you click on, in this case, DH01, and go to the lithology tab, you can see the top and bottom of each of these individual layers. Um, and the information's been transferred from Excel into the program. And so to confirm that, the other way to look at it is we can open up the strip logs tool. This is part of the borehole operations uh, subgroup. And we can open up the 3D strip logs. And what this will create is a 3D box that'll show the locations of our borings. It'll show the relative heights, and it'll also show the different lithology groups for each boring. So there's several different menus you can click through. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna keep it very simple. Um, but it, so for this example, we're gonna keep a blank perimeter page, and we're gonna go all the way to the 3D log design. And in our case, a title, axis, and the lithology for each boring is all the information we need. So we're gonna hit continue on the bottom. And here is our roughed out 3D interpretation of all of our boring locations with the lithology in each boring. If we go under edit, you can, this is where you can add your legend for your lithology and put it on the side here. So in this case, we're seeing layers of clay, gravel, sand, some soil at the top. Um, but in other cases, you may have the whole selection of each of these units. The other way to show this data is in two-dimensional and three-dimensional cross-sections. The three-dimensional cross-section um, is sometimes referred to as a fence diagram. So I'm gonna close out of this 3D strip log. And instead, under the lithology tool, this is where we can open up our um, either projected section. So this is gonna be a two-dimensional cross-section. You have a very similar set of options for the 2D and 3D cross-sections that I'll show in a minute. In this case, this is a projected cross-section. So instead of needing to go from one boring to the next in a direct path, you can just have a straight line that cuts through areas of borings. And the program will 
decide which ones are within this space and which ones are outside of it and generate the cross section accordingly. You can control the width of this region called the swath and that will also limit or expand how many borings are included within this path. So I'm gonna set it back to 20, which is the default and hit continue. And so here is the rough draft of our cross section. Uh, you can tell that it's the same units that we showed on the 3D strip log document before. And this shows us our locations of our clay, our other units. Um, this is a very fast way to show all of your borings within a 2D cross section um, without the need to go into GIS or draft or hand sketch your lines of section. I've often found that the 2D cross sections aren't as good as the 3D fence diagrams for understanding the structure of the lithology. So we're gonna close out of our 2D cross section and do the same process, but using the lithology tool fence diagram and using the basic, uh, the same basic user interface, we're gonna go to the fence location. And instead of just drawing one path, we're gonna pre-select the hatch uh, pattern and hit continue. And we should see a three-dimensional uh, interpolated fence diagram showing the lithology of each of the individual borings and units. And here is our fence diagram. Just some tips on controlling the direction and orientation of your model using the mouse. If you right click and hold, you can physically move the entire model. If you left click and hold, this is how you can click and rotate your fence diagram. Rockworks is a program where you can go as far as you want in terms of data analysis. You can add in concentrations of different contaminants. You can interpolate between those concentrations in soil. You can generate top-down 2D and 3D uh, representations of uh, contamination in groundwater or any other unit. Um, but this is uh, just a basic introduction to how you would construct your overall model domain and take your lithology information from individual borings and construct a 3D representation.